his high name. This is Evangelist Mary L. McCracken, and you are listening to the Holy Ghost Takeover Outreach Ministry. And I am so thankful to God for an opportunity to come and share the word of the Lord with you today, because truly there is a word from the Lord. Hey, there's fresh manner from the throne of grace. Now, let's acknowledge the Lord through prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, healing God, touch and deliver. Wonderful God, touch and make whole. Look on people everywhere, men, women, boys, and girls, as this broadcast goes over the air. God, let it fall on good ground. Touch their hearts, their minds, and their souls. Let them be encouraged and uplifted. God, especially look on the sick, whatever the condition in their bodies. God, I know you're a healer. Touch them right now. Lift them right now. Bind that enemy right now that comes to afflict. Hey, because you come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Hide me behind the cross and cover me in your blood. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Going immediately into the message today, the title of the message is A Good Day, Part 1. Yes, the title of that message is A Good Day, Part 1. You're not listening to this broadcast by accident. In our lives, we have days that bring us happiness and bring us joy. And on the other side of the coin, we have days that bring us pain and sadness. Glory to God. Hey, how you're about to see. But whatever state you're in today, God wants you to look up knowing that there's a good day coming. Hey, he wants you to be encouraged knowing that he has not forgotten you or forsaken you. And that's good news right there. Better days are coming. Go with me, if you please, to the Gospel of John, the second chapter, as recorded in verses 1 through 11. And it talks about, on the third day, hey, there was a marriage, hey, that took place in Cana of Galilee. And Jesus' mother, Mary, was there, and Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Hey, how you're supposed to see. Then Jesus' mother came to him and said, they have no wine. Glory to God. And during that time, those communities were relatively small. So if the person that was giving the wedding ran out of wine, that trauma could live with them forever. And also, they may have to be under a financial burden because they did not calculate how much refreshments they needed for their guests. So they would never outlive that. Glory to God. So Jesus' mother evidently knew that Jesus could fix that thing. And Jesus said, woman, what have I to do with you? My hour has not yet come. Glory to God. So Mary turned to the servants and said, Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. I come to you today and tell you, because the hour is late. Hey, it's almost midnight. Hey, Jesus is on his way back. So whatever Jesus has told you to do, just do it. Glory to God. So many times people look at their ministries and they despise the time of small beginnings. Glory to God. But if you're faithful in the little, God will reward you and you will become faithful in the much. Well, that's a word today. Glory to God. How you the both see? So the servants were told, take the six water pots that were used for jury tradition, hey, in purification, hey, and fill them filled with water. So each water pot held 20 or 30 gallons. They filled the water pots to the brim. Glory to God. And Jesus told them, now take this wine to the governor. 
And when the governor of the feast drank the wine, he, he didn't know that it had been water. He didn't know where it came from, but the servants knew. And then he called the groom and he said, come here. Hey, and he said, most people, they served their best wine at the beginning. Hey, and after the people have well consumed the wine, that's when they bring forth the worst. Glory to God, but you have saved the best wine for last. Hey, perhaps haven't you been thinking about God have saved the best for last? Hey, your ministry, glory to God, can impact millions. Glory to God. Or your family, or perhaps your neighborhood, or your workplace. Hey, whatever the case may be, do the work of an evangelist. Lay hold to eternal life for the books. Oh, they're going to be open. Hey, what will be written in your book? Glory to God. Did you do everything you could with a good spirit for the Lord? Or did you take your one gift and hide it and make excuse? Hey, the books, I'm telling you today, will be open. What is written in the book of life for you? Glory to God. How you the both see? And this was the beginning of miracles for Jesus. Hey, how you the both see? And his disciples believed on him. Glory to God. And it was a good day. Glory to God. Now let's talk about another good day. As found in 1 Samuel, the 11th chapter. Hey, how you the both see? And I love this scripture. This is one of my favorites. And it talks about how Nahash, the Ammonite, came against the people at Jabesh Gilead. Hey, how you the both see? And he encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And so the people said, um, we want you to make a treaty with us, Nahash. Glory to God, because they knew he was an evil person. So Nahash said, I will make a treaty with you. But this is what I want you to do. Hey, allow me to take out your right eye. Hey, and use it as a reproach to Israel. Then we can have a covenant. Glory to God. So the people at Jabesh Gilead said, well, just give us seven days repute. And we're going to send messengers along the coast of Israel. And if we cannot find a man that will come out and help us, we will agree to this. Glory to God. So they sent out messengers. And some of the messengers came to the town where Saul lived. Glory to God. And when the people heard this horrible news, they began to weep and cry. And when Saul, hey, how you're to both see, came from handling the herd, he heard all this commotion and he wanted to know why are the people crying? Glory to God. And they rehearsed what Nahash had told the men at Jabesh Gilead. Glory to God. How you're to both see. So the Lord kindled righteous anger in Saul. And Saul took a herd of oxen and cut them up. Hey, and he sent messages himself. He said, take these pieces of oxen throughout all the coasts of Israel and let them know if you do not come down to fight with these people, hey, to help Jabesh Gilead out, I'm going to cut up all your oxen and do the same to you. Glory to God. So the people had the fear of God on them. Glory to God. And when the fear of God hit them, they all came out. 300,000 people came from Israel. 30,000 people came from Judah. Hey, they were ready to fight when they heard the news that if they did not come out with Saul or Samuel, glory to God, bad things were going to happen to their oxen. Glory to God. So Saul let the people tell the messengers that came from Jabesh Gilead, go back and tell the men of uh, Jabesh Gilead, hey, tomorrow about the time the sun be hot, ye shall have help. That's a word for someone today. Tomorrow 
by the time the sun be hot, you shall have help. And you know, God is great at strategy. What happened, Saul and his men, they didn't wait to high noon or whenever the sun got hot. Hey, they went down on the morning watch and, he, and they began to slay these people. And the people that they did not kill, hey, they were so scattered until one could not find another. Hey, they wreaked havoc in that place. Glory to God. And the people celebrated. They had a wonderful day. Glory to God. And somebody asked Samuel, you know, there were some people that were against Saul. And now look at what a victory he has given us. Let's go and get these men and kill them. Glory to God. But Saul stopped them. And Saul said, the Lord has given Israel this victory. No one is going to be put to death. Glory to God. How you the both see? So they decided, let's go to Gilgal. Let's establish the kingdom there. And let's crown Saul king of Israel. Glory to God. So they went and they offered sacrifices there. Hey, and they rejoiced greatly because God had given them a great day. Now, let me share one of the great days that the Lord has given my family. Hey, glory to God. My mother, hey, was my spiritual child. I was her biological child. Hey, but she was saved through my ministry. Glory to God. And I love that. Of all the people that have been influenced by the Holy Ghost Takeover Outreach Ministry, this is one of my favorites. Glory to God. And what happened, my parent has started getting older, and I had started talking to her about the Lord. And as she got older, I didn't know exactly what was going on. Sometimes we give up on people too soon. Glory to God. But I refused to give up on my mother. So I kept relating things that were happening to me and things that I had seen when I was among the saints and in the church. Glory to God. Now, my mother knew about holiness, but because of family pressure, hey, she didn't get saved. Glory to God. Hey, but when God saved me, that was a turning point for my family. Hey, how you to see? I was just like a, a microphone. Hey, running around. Telling people, get saved. God did this. God did that. He'll do this. Glory to God. I was telling it so that even my next door neighbor said, Mary thinks everybody's going to be saved. So what happened in my mother's case? I had gone to church and the missionaries had said, we're going to have Bible study with people that are shut up in the home. Now, my mother, I don't know really what happened to her, whether it was a stroke or whatever, but she lived with me, and all of a sudden, she became bedridden. Glory to God. She couldn't walk. Hey, how you know, she had no activity of her lower limbs. She was bedridden, but she loved God. So when the missionaries came to my house, and they said, oh, we're come to have Bible study, hey, and I guess I surprised them. I said, oh, no, you didn't. Hey, and I'm sure that shocked them. Then I went on to say, mother needs the Holy Ghost. Hey, the plans had changed. Glory to God. How you the both see? Hey, that was no day to hear about Daniel and the lion's den and the three Hebrew boys. Hey, we had a soul at stake. Glory to God. Hey, that after she received salvation, she could benefit from the Bible stories. Glory to God. So they went in there and they started having her praise God. And you know, my elderly mother in a hospital bed began to say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, and she kept on saying it until after a while her language changed 
and she began to speak in tongues. Glory to God. And I was in the living room. And oh, I was dancing and making so much noise until my oldest daughter said, Mother, he must have gotten the Holy Ghost. Hey, honey, because I was trying to tear that floor up. Hey, we had joy and a good day. Glory to God. So this is one of my precious memories about how God gave us a good day. Hey, glory to God. And one of my best memories, because that's memory number two. I'm not going to go into my other family members that also got the Holy Ghost. But I will share with you how I received the Holy Ghost. Hey, how you're supposed to see. I was going about my daily business when all of a sudden God moved a sanctified Holy Ghost filled woman next door. And I could look at this woman, hey, and tell it was something different about her. Glory to God. And as I went about my daily routine, I would see her outside sometime, hey, and I was tired from work. I would just wave and speak, and I was continually going into the house. Glory to God. How you know both see? But little did I know, for almost a year, she was praying for me. And then one day, God opened that door for her to get to me. Hey, my oldest daughter needed a babysitter. And I didn't know anyone that could keep my daughter, hey, how you know both see, for the period of time that I needed. Hey, so my son went next door and said, Mama said, can you keep the baby? I never said that. Hey, sometimes we need to be careful what we say around children. No doubt he had heard me talking in the house and wondering how I was going to get this problem solved. Glory to God. So he took it upon himself to help his mother out. Hey, God uses children. We need to listen carefully to what our children are saying because God can even speak through them. Don't dismiss them. Hey, all the time you need to listen. Hey, and find out exactly what they're trying to tell you. Glory to God. Sometimes it may just be childish chatter. Or other times it may be a word from the Lord. Glory to God. So my son came back and said, Mama, she loved to keep the baby. And you know, I was dumbfounded. Glory to God, who would love to keep a preschool child? Because after I went to her and asked her how much she charged, she said nothing. Glory to God. And what she said dumbfounded me. She said God would pay her. I'd never heard that before. Glory to God. Because as you know, sometimes uh, people, when they keep children, they deserve to be paid. Keeping a child is not easy. Glory to God, but she said God would pay her. So what I decided to do, I decided to do good things for her. She could not drive, so when I got a chance, I would drive her around. And you know what? I ended up being the chauffeur for the saints. Glory to God, and what a joy it was. So I would try to do good little things for her to compensate her for what she was doing for me. All I did not know was God was constantly reeling me in, reeling me in to holiness. Glory to God. So she had a Bible study and she had this Bible study during the time when there was nothing at the church because she said, if you're well enough to go to church, you're well enough to come to the Bible study. So since we were well enough to go to Bible study, hey, when we had revivals and things at the church, she sent all of us backpacking to the church. Glory to God. So for three different occasions, I was going to get the Holy Ghost. The first time I went, nothing happened. Hey, her house was next door to mine. I went over there talking English. I came back talking English. Hey, the second time I went, glory to God, I went over there talking English, 
and during the process here of praising God, I did start to speak in a new language. Glory to God. Now, a younger minister heard me, but I guess he said, honey, if the old saints do not say you got it, you better come back because I'm not saying anything. Glory to God. So the next time there was a space between the second time and the third time because something was going on at the church. And you know, I had become so anxious. I felt like if I died during this time, I was destined for Hades because now I knew the truth. I had to be saved, hey, and I had to get the precious gift of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. Glory to God, how you're supposed to see. So that third time, I made up my mind that when I went to the Bible study, I was coming back with the Holy Ghost. When you want to be saved, you have to be determined. Glory to God. When I would minister to people on the altar and I would see people come up, I could always tell who came up for business. Glory to God. If they lifted their hands and looked like they were tired or couldn't hardly say thank you or whatever, I knew they didn't come for anything. And as a result, they probably wasn't going to get anything. Hey, but when I saw someone, hey, going in, giving it all they got, oh, I knew that a blessing was coming. Glory to God. How you the both see? So that third time, hey, how you the both see? I went in, head to the Bible study, and they said, uh, she's here to get the Holy Ghost. The saints tear it with me. Hey, there are many ways to get the Holy Ghost. But in my case, hey, they tear it. What do I mean by tear it? They just had me stand up there and I said, thank you, Jesus, until I felt like I was literally going to fall out. But why was that? Because I was praising him for the good, good something. Hey, I was praising him for the infilling of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. Hey, so I praise God with all my heart. And what happened, the first time God slayed me in the spirit. I had never experienced that before. And I floated down. Some of you have seen people have hands laid on them and they fall on the floor. Hey, let me explain that. When God touches you, hey, you're going to go down. Just think about hurricanes and how the wind blows and big trees being in break. Do you think that you're able to stand up there straight when the power of God hits you? You're going to go down. Hey, that happened the first time. Glory to God. And the second time, hey, God did it again. Back on the floor I went. Glory to God. How you the both see? So God knew that I really didn't know what to do. Hey, and the third time was it. Hey, when God slayed me in the spirit himself, because no one laid hands on me. Hey, how you're supposed to see, it was all God doing that thing. Hey, and when he slayed me in the spirit the third time, I began to speak in tongues. It was this, I was pent to the floor. I literally could not get up. Hey, I had a glorious language. Hey, but it wasn't a complete language. Hey, it was like babies. Da, da, mama. It was syllables. Hey, and later on, I told God, I want to speak like the big girls. Hey, and if you heard any of my broadcasts, you realize that I have a full language. Hey, shatakaya. I know BBB, I I wanted to talk like the big girls. Hey, I wanted a full language, not choppy tongues. Glory to God. How you both see? And God came in, hey, and gave me my desire. Now, before we go, hey, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, 
as this ministry goes through the air, bless your people, save your people, hey, fill them with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. You have been listening to Evangelist Mary L. McCracken, and it has been my honor to be with you to represent the Holy Ghost Takeover Outreach Ministry. I will always say that Jesus and the Holy Ghost is the producer, the director, the everything to this broadcast. And now, until that very next time, may the Lord bless you, you and you, is my fervent prayer. God bless.